is Gap Minute, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Gentlemen, it's fun time with Stephen Kravitz, the fun master. Tell us a joke, Steve. Two Jews walk into a bar. You know, that was the one I was thinking of. And they buy it. And they buy it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? As I said that, tell us a joke, Steve. I was thinking in my mind, two Jews walk into a bar and buy it. Oh, really? And then you told the joke. That's right. That must be the most common joke that you would say if you said to somebody, tell me a joke. But that's something, you probably get that a lot. Uh, yeah. They, they think that you must know jokes. And I don't. And I don't. I, I can't remember jokes. I mean, no, I can remember a funny one, and I can then repeat it for about a day, and then ask me a week later, and I can't remember the joke. Right, right. I'm the same way. I've never been much for jokes. No. You know, jokes are one-liners, folks, that... How do we describe a joke as opposed to a comedian telling a joke in his act? It's different. Jokes are like, take my wife, please. Well, that... No, that's part, that's part of an act. I'm talking about actual jokes like, once upon a time there was a princess. Oh. You want me to tell you that story? About that joke? It's the first joke I ever learned. Okay, tell me. Uh, 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 princess... Uh, um, is walking through the woods one day and uh, she happens upon a frog and the frog looks up and says hi princess and she says you can talk he says yes he says of course I can I'm a talking frog well why are you a talking frog well I was enchanted by this witch several years ago I was a handsome prince but I can overdo that curse outdo that curse get rid of that curse whatever the curse if a woman will just spend the night with me. And so she says, oh, well, okay, I can do that. So she picks up the frog and she takes him home, puts him in her bedroom. That night when she goes to sleep, she puts him on the pillow beside her. Right. Okay. And when she wakes up in the morning, there's a handsome prince. And do you know to this day her parents don't believe the story? <laughs> Now, that, that was a joke taught to me by my father, who then would bring me out to a party of his friends and say, tell the joke. Right, right. You know, and I never understood the punchline till I got older. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Well, you wouldn't as a kid. Yeah, but that was the first joke I ever learned. And it was taught to me by my father as a party trick. So you can see how my upbringing was. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Well, how about, do you remember your first, first joke you ever learned? It's got to be something silly because you're a kid, right? Uh, there's a priest, a minister, and a rabbi. Yeah. And they're all talking one day and they're saying, how do you decide what money goes to the church, what money goes to your salary? And the priest says, well, I go outside, I draw a circle on the ground, I throw the money up in the air, everything that lands inside the circle is mine, everything that lands outside the circle is the church." And the minister says, well, I do something the same, the same thing. I go inside, I draw a circle on the ground, I throw the money up in the air, everything that lands inside the circle goes to the church, and everything that lands outside the circle goes to me. Mm -hmm. And the rabbi says, I do something the same, uh, same, very similar. I go outside, I throw the money up in the air, everything he wants, he takes while it's up there, everything that hits the ground is mine. <laughs> that was the first joke you ever remember? Well, that's the first joke I remember. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What age were you when you heard that joke? Uh, I was probably a teenager. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, uh, I Because I learned mine, I would say, when I was five years old, six years old. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I was never much for jokes, you know? 
No, me neither. And people go, I'm going to tell you a joke. Oh, okay. And then they tell you the joke, and they've got no timing whatsoever. Right. And they're constantly screwing up the, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, and he goes into the bar. The Jews go, a good Jew goes into the bar. Right. Right. Now, I do have a couple of, you know, there are a couple of jokes in my mind that stand out because, I don't know, I guess I just enjoyed them. Okay, uh, what are they? Tell well, me the, one. The one joke I heard, I remember this was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and I can't remember who told it, but it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant joke. The guy goes into a bar with his dog, and he said, I've got a talking dog here. And the bartender says, sure, you got a talking dog. He says, no, really. He says, if I can get this dog to talk, will you give me a free drink? And the bartender says, of course, if you can get that dog to talk, I'll give you a free drink. So the guy goes to, the, says to the, uh, to the uh, uh, dog, uh, tell him, um, who, 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 what is, what do you, what is it that we have on top of our house? And the dog goes, roof. And the bartender goes, he just barked. That's all he did. He barked. Right. No, he said right. roof, but he barked. Okay. Uh, okay. Who was the greatest ball player of all time? And the dog goes, Ruth. Ruth. And with that, the bartender says, I've had it with both of you. And he picks them up and throws both of them out into the street. And as they're sitting out there, the guy goes, why didn't you start talking? And he said, what, it was DiMaggio? Uh, yeah, I, I've heard that joke. Now, there's another do a dog goes into a bar with his master joke. Okay. Yeah, and um, uh, I, I'm trying to remember. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, I can't, I can't remember the joke. I do remember it has something to do with the fact that he says to the bartender, this dog can talk. Oh, that, yeah, that was it. This dog can talk. Uh, and um, how does he give the dog $50? I can't remember the joke, okay? That's how bad, that's, that's the, uh, that's the uh, gabbling speaking. I cannot remember the joke. Do you remember the punchline? Punchline was, uh, he, he gives him 50, the 50 bucks. Oh, I know what it was. He talks to the, all right. So he says to the bartender, this dog can talk. And the bartender says, sure. He says, uh, is it, your master says you can talk. Is that true? He says, it's absolutely true. He says, it's amazing. Your dog can talk. He says, uh, wow. He said, uh, could you do me a favor? He said, uh, I'll give you 50 bucks, the dog. And uh, just go across the street to my uh, my nemesis, my uh, co competition across the street, and sit at the bar, and then order something. He'll have a heart attack. So the dog goes, "Okay, sure, I'll be happy to." So he grabs the fifty, but put the fifty bucks in his collar because obviously he can't hold the fifty bucks. Right. And uh, the guy and the bartender is now sitting there for like a half hour, and the dog hasn't come back yet. Oh, I know it. He wanted him to go across the street to the bar, uh, other bar, order a drink, and say, this is the worst drink I've ever had, okay, and then come back. And for that, he's getting 50 bucks, right? Right. So the dog has the 50 bucks in his collar. So now the guy, they're sitting there, and the dog hasn't come back for a half hour, and they go, where's the goddamn dog? He should have already told the guy it was a lousy drink, and they didn't like the bar, and, you know, whatever, come right. back. So the guy, the owner, the master, goes out to the street, and in the middle of the street... He sees his dog fucking another dog. And he goes up to his dog and he says, stop it. Why are you doing this? And he said, I never had 50 bucks before. <laughs> Something like that. I, did, I slaughtered the joke because I couldn't remember every nuance right. of it. You know? Right. And then there are the long jokes. The ones that go on forever. Right. The ones that to like my friend Penn Jillette, become kind of an opera that you sing. Right. You know, uh, and uh, the, 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 the the classic joke of all of them is, of course, the uh, the um, aristocrats. aristocrats. 
And what you can take that joke and just tell it in two seconds, right? right. My wife does this, my wife does that. Then, you know, punchline, we call ourselves the aristocrats. And I think most people who are watching us know the joke by now because there was a whole movie about it. Right. Uh, so that, but that joke you can turn into an opera. You can go on for a half hour with that joke. Oh yeah. You know, you can turn it into a tour de force. And there's some people like Gilbert Gottfried, the late Gilbert Gottfried, who did it to a T. Just a wonderful re recitation of that joke. <laughs> uh, but there's he another. He did it at a roast. Yes. Yes, but there, the other joke that is to me the, a better joke than the aristocrats is what we call the bear joke. And Penn Jillette used to tell me the bear joke. What's the bear joke? You got time? Yeah, I got time. Guy goes into the forest, gonna go shooting, and he sees a bear. So he picks up his shotgun, points it directly at the bear, fires and misses. Bear turns around. Big, huge, giant bear. Walks over to him and says, grabs the right shotgun and says, what do you think you're doing? You, you almost killed me. And the guy says, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it. This is terrible, I can't. He says, well, he says, I'm not gonna hurt you, but I do want you not to go away knowing the error of your ways. And he turns the guy around, pulls his pants down, and with his big, greasy bear dick, just rallies him in the ass. Just just does it to a T, right? right? And the guy is now lying on the floor, his ass is bleeding a little, and the bear says, now don't ever do that again, and throws a shotgun down on the, on the ground. And he turns around and walks away, and the guy is thinking to himself, you know, I don't think I could miss a second time. So he brings himself up to his feet. He's feeling a little weak from this bear dick, okay? Right. And he grabs a shotgun, and he aims it at the bear and misses again. Bear turns around, comes over. What the hell do you think you're doing? He says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. I really, I didn't mean to do it. He says, that's fine. He grabs the shotgun. He says, you know the drill. Turn around. The guy turns around and he gives him a giant rendering. What's the word? Rendering? I don't know. Of his bear dick. Big, right. greasy, smelly bear dick in his ass. Now his ass is bleeding like crazy, and the bear says, just for good measure, and he sticks his, this greasy bear dick that has already come in the guy's mouth. Oh, God. Okay? And then he, the, he, the, he's like shoving as far as he can, and uh, his, the guy's tonsils are flaring, and he, he, finally the bear says, okay, I'm through. He says, gives him, throws a shotgun on the ground, says, never do that again. The guy says, I promise I never will. And the bear turns around and starts to walk away. And the guy is thinking for a moment. And he goes, you know, I don't think I can miss again. I just don't think I can miss again. So he stands up. Just He's like, he's really weak now. But he stands up and he, he's got a clear shot at this bear. And he pulls the trigger. Guess what? Amen. Misses again. Bear turns around, now he's really mad. And he comes over and he grabs that shotgun, throws it on the ground, and says, what did I tell you? You know, you keep trying this and you keep doing this and you've never learned your lesson. So turn around. And now he just rages away with his big greasy bear dick in this guy's ass, okay? And they're pumping away, he's pumping away, and the guy is in great pain, and he's almost passing out from the pain, and now the bear turns him around, and now it's time for the mouth to do the same thing. He puts it in his mouth, and it's got all, it's a greasy bear dick with all this bear cum on it, and, and, and uh, blood, blood from, you know, from his rear end, and uh, uh, he, uh, he again gets himself a major blow job. And now he's through. And he says, now what did I tell you? Don't ever do it again. 
By the way, I didn't think, I don't think you came here to hunt. <laughs> and that's the end of the joke. I blew the, the punchline. But uh, I, I, I shouldn't have actually had him have sex a third time. He should have just looked at him and said, I don't think you co you're coming here to hunt. Yeah. <laughs> now that's the bear joke. Now when Penn Gillette tells it, it goes on for a half hour. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. He's describing every part of the bear's anatomy and the blood and the thing and everything. And I hope we don't get uh, uh, taken off for this because uh, this is this could demonetize me for this episode. Is that right? Telling that joke. But that is that is the bear joke. And we, we all consider the bear joke to be a better joke than the aristocrats. And again, you know, Penn turns it into an opera. Right. And, and it's a virtuoso, a virtuoso piece. And the thing about the, the um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, aristocrats, is you can do anything you want to with the joke. There are people who have different stories, you know, right. different backgrounds on it. So it, it's, it's really good, you know, that, uh, hey, you know, that's what you can do. Do you know any uh, jokes like that or no? No. No. I know a comics joke. A comics joke. Right. Give a bunch me of comics are, a bunch of comics are sitting around and one comic says, Did you hear? Joe played Atlantic City. Standing room only, got standing ovations all weekend. He was they they, they, they they loved him so much they signed him to a month contract. And everybody goes, No, we didn't hear, we didn't hear. We didn't hear. And the guy says, Did you hear about Frank? Plays Atlantic City. No, no, he plays Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas sold out every show. Standing ovations. They loved him so much they gave him a gold watch. They gave him a gold watch, and he got put there for a year. For a year straight. Did you hear? Did you hear? And then they all go, No, we didn't hear. And then the, the guy says, Now, did you hear about Tom? Played Dallas. Bombed. And they all go, We heard. <laughs> That's a very good joke. And it's as a, a comic joke. Uh, yeah, and I mean a comic would really laugh at that. Right. Okay. So you know, I mean, and they sh and they should because it's a funny, funny joke. Yeah, but jokes are jokes are something like I I know very few of them. I know the bear joke because I remember it. I know the aristocrats because I remember it. But there there are there there. Are, show pieces those jokes you know right. there right. uh and, and by the way the aristocrats was a joke that comics told each other a lot right for a long time the aristocrats wasn't known to the public it was yeah. only known to the comics by the way folks in case you've never heard the aristocrats go on to youtube and put in aristocrats and you'll see 80 versions of the joke right okay right. um but it really doesn't have a punchline. no the it's what goes on before it Right. It, it, it's his family, and then they, they, they have an act, and they say what they do, and it's a very dirty act, and the mother has the blah, 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 and the father has the act, and the daughter, and the blah, dog. blah, blah, and the daughter's doing it with the dog. And, blah, and this can go on for years. I mean, Gilbert's version was about, <laughs> what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes Something long? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. And, and, uh, uh, he, uh, and the punchline, of course, is, that's amazing. What do you call yourselves? We call ourselves the aristocrats. Now, right. that, that is not funny. I mean, you probably didn't laugh when I told it that way because I didn't do the build-up. Right. You right. Know? So uh, it, it, it's one of those jokes that in the hands of a master is just ambrosia. Right. You know? But it's not a joke you could tell folks out there if you just, you're not used to telling jokes because it's a performance joke. That, right. That's the best way to put it. Um, it's a joke that, that that leaves nothing to the imagination. Yeah. Now you go to a guy like Bubbles. Is his act nothing but jokes? Yeah. Because they're one-liners. Well, they're not. They're not jokes. They're one-liners. Right. You know. I mean, Bubs. You watch. I watched a lot of Bubs lately, just for the hell of it, because you can find him on YouTube, here right. and there. And I can probably find you too. I haven't looked you up yet. Well, I know that you're up there because I, I one of my videos went up there of you at one of the shows that we did. Right. So, but 
you know, um, uh, uh, Bubs does one-liners, and and the joke that you're t he's telling now is going to have nothing to do with the next joke. In other words, there's no continuity. You know, it is. Have you ever noticed blah 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 is like the kind of thing a normal comic would do, and then he would go into many jokes related to that right, premise. Right, right, right. Okay. Where Bubs are just one line at a time. You know, my favorite being his opening line: uh, "Somebody stole my identity. Now they have no life." Right. You know, and 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 and, and Stephen. All Rutgers, his jokes are built on his persona. Exactly. Exactly. And and Stephen Wright. Same thing. Just one one liner after another. Non sequiturs. Yep. Yep. You know, jokes like. Uh, uh, gee, uh, there's no bike rack. Why is there no bike rack at the children's hospital? You know, things like that. Right. You know, and one-liners, and and so, but they're not jokes. They're one-liners. And I don't know how to describe to the one, huh? A Stephen, a Stephen Wright joke is uh, I, I haven't called it because my phone has no nines. Uh, how long has that been going on? I don't know. My calendar has no sixes. <laughs> He, uh, but he, again, a one-liner is distinguished from a joke in that a joke usually has some kind of story you're telling, maybe a Right, and the idea is to, to tell jokes on the way to the punchline. If you do when you, tell a when you tell a story, there should be funny moments within the story. Yeah. And the punchline should be the payoff. But, but n n in normal terms, a joke basically is, a, is not a one-liner. A joke is right. a pr a, a, something you're saying, like, guy goes, two Jews walk into a bar and they buy it. Well, that's a one-liner, but it's also, it's a joke. Right. Uh, because it, ha it has a story kind of thing. One-liners are like Bubs with his, you know, now no one right. else has a life. Um, but uh, but you, didn't, you never did that in your act. Your act no. was what? How do you describe what you did? I tell stories. Yeah. Yeah. I tell stories. In fact, hey, you, you didn't see me, but near the end I was sitting on a stool and telling stories. Really? Why on a stool? Because, well, the first reason I started sitting on a stool was I was too fucked up to stand. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then as I got clean, I decided I liked being on a stool because also... It brought me down uh, to an audience level, and I, I wasn't so, uh, uh, what's the word, like a big guy couldn't do what I do, because he, he it would be threatening. I guess when So, it, so sitting sitting, sit, sitting is more intimate, because you can look right down at them. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So you kept the stool, but l l lost the drugs. That's right. Oh, good. Uh, you know. Was it, when, you, when you quit drugs, was there a period of time there where you couldn't go on stage? No. Oh, by the way, if you hear any kind of noise outside our apartment house, they are what they're, they're pointing the building, which is a cl clear out the cement between the bricks and replace it with new cement. And they're doing that for every brick in this huge, giant apartment house. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when you told me how big the apartment house was. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. But they're doing, now they're doing the courtyard. They did the outside. In the courtyard, you can hear from here. So if people are hearing a little bit of noise, can you hear it? Maybe you I can't, can't hear it. I can't hear it. Uh, that's what it is. I'm, ex I'm just excusing it in case it's going out as audio here. But right. uh, anyway, so how's, uh, uh, just quickly before we go, how's working at Lowe's? Different. Different? Different. different? Are, you, are, you, oh, yeah. are you enjoying it? Yes, I actually I am. Yeah, and, I am. Well, no, next yeah. time when we when we when we talk, I'll have to go into a longer discussion on what it is about Lowe's you are enjoying. Okay. Because quite frankly, I don't know I, if I could handle it. Although I could probably handle it because you are dealing with people every day. You know, you're, right. It's not like uh, these guys here are uh, just taking a. a a drill or whatever they do, get rid of the cement between the things, between the bricks, and then they put new stuff in between the bricks. Right. They have to do this for the entire entire apartment, and they've been doing this for like six months. 
Right. I could I not do that. Alone. I could not do that without going crazy. Right. Right. Anyway, hey, good talking to you. We'll do this again uh, next week, huh? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And there goes Steve Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes, there he goes. Bye, Steve. Uh, I'll see you next week. I'll tell you, I, I had a, a, you know, I'm beginning to wonder whether I really should keep doing stuff anymore because I've lost it. I've really lost it. I don't know what my problem is, but I, 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 keep, I keep screwing up, okay? I keep forgetting stuff. I can't tell jokes correctly. You know, I try to get some of those old jokes. I couldn't remember them. And then today I'm doing these this interview with, with Steve and then after we did that we did another one and I started it and we're going and all of a sudden halfway through the interview I realize it isn't recording and originally I blamed myself but then I went back and somehow I did have about three minutes of the uh, of the interview so I don't you know so these things I, I just you know yeah but anyway so how are you how y'all doing to this fine evening uh, here in the, the United States of America. Um, anyway, I, 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 I thank uh, Steve for being with us and for putting up with the fact that I interviewed him for 15 minutes. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, Anyway, where are we? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's time for us to go talk to our citizen panel. Not many of them. We just got... Uh, two people here but uh, they're two good people so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll check out with them and see if uh, as time goes on if uh, more people care to join us you know fuck them fuck them fuck em. how y'all doing i'm yeah. doing great i went to lodi today so i heard a couple more of the the alex bennett shows oh the what? This, the, this is guy. A, he posted, it, it, this is uh, th this is a guy who. What's his name? Mike Aiello. Mike Aiello, who seems to have stolen all my old shows, and is putting them up on YouTube. Yeah. Which I don't. You know, I don't know how I feel about that. You know. I I, I own that material. I'm doing you know? great. So it's kind, of, it's kind of like stealing from me. I know, but. I like it because I can hear the show. Well, there, I'll they, take, so, I'll so take, supper with. Go ahead. Supper well, with Schwartzman. Uh -huh. They had you had <clears throat> with Greg Proops and and all those guys, and then um, they roasted you, and then they had uh, this the couple that I heard coming back home. There's one with uh, there's actually one with with Ruben when he called from the John Bull across the street when you were doing the, the movies critics with uh, Michael Snyder. Yeah. And he joked from some guy over there. Mm -hmm. A lot of memories start clicking. The stuff you used to say and then the, um, uh, you know, some of your bits and stuff. It, it's it's really, really fun to listen to. So Well, that's nice. Uh, you know, it's nice that somebody's stealing from me and you can enjoy it. If you really want me to, I can send you those things. Oh, you know, I, can, I would love I, to. I can to... send you shows, or I yes. could, I could, you know, you know what I should, I should do? I should take all that guy's stuff, which some of which I, I may not have, or if I do have it, it's very hard to find in the thousands of tapes that I have in the other room. Mm -hmm. And uh, I should record them off of his. <laughs> and then repost them under my name. Yes, I agree. You know, and uh, uh, I and and, and, I, and I can strip them of his stuff and everything. You know, I oh wow, the sun's setting really nice. Hey, the I've had that happen with my cars. My cars I, when I started building one that let's, was getting let, really let, big. Let, let's talk about his cars for for a second. Let's let's tell people that you are a big car guy. Car. Yes, so. <laughs> So uh, my friend said, they, they, "You're like his car. They start getting personalities of their own, and they start popping up. Mm -hmm. So I started <laughs> popping up. But one car show they use that for the for the you know, advertisement for the show. That's happened a few times. Mm -hmm. 
And then I've gone and called him and said, hey, what's, you know, can I get in the show for free since you're using my car as the likeness for your show? And so, it, it I mean, I felt the same way. People have painted my car and done photography mm -hmm. and put it on, like, the aluminum, fused yeah. it on aluminum and yeah. sold it, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I have mixed feelings, too. It's on the public, so it's fine for everybody, but, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I, uh, I do this for a living. Okay, I've done this for a living over the years. And I've also insanely protected my material, you know, because I want to be the guy to use it. Right. Uh, it's mine. I own it. Uh, that was the one of the deals I made with Live 105 mm -hmm. as an example, is that after the shows were broadcast, they were mine. Mm -hmm. They had the right to rerun them if I went away on vacation or something like that, but basically I own them. Mm -hmm. Um and so I don't like the idea, you know, of somebody just capriciously stealing my work. You know, he could, if he had stolen it, if he wanted to use it and then asked me first if he could, sure. I probably would have said, fine, go ahead, you know? Yeah. But I, it, the fact that I'm not even asked and it's, and it's stolen from me, right. uh, that I don't like, you know? Yeah, and I'm sort of surprised that to post your stuff is like sort of out of the norm. If he was a fan, I'm sure, you know, why didn't he contact you? Yeah, it's sort of weird. Yeah, I mean, if he at least asked, hey, Alex, uh, do you mind? I have all these tapes of you that I have, you know, that I've saved from the I'm past. A big fan. And a big yeah. fan, I'd love to put them up. Do you mind? And I'd, go, hmm. I'd probably go, sure, go right ahead, do it. But since he right. hasn't, you know, uh, I mean, I'd go get an attorney and sue him, but, you know, why it's not going to be worth the money, yeah. you know, so. What the hell? Yes. I think people have different what? attitudes so, about so, cars and about hearing you on your show right. over the years. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, can th I know one person who used to, as he was younger, would always, uh, whatever was on the phone that evening, he would make a record of it. Guess what he is now? He's an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Alan. Sorry, I wanted to let Jeff go. Um, you know how I like to tell jokes, and most of them you don't laugh at. So one of your listeners, mm -hmm. who's a good friend of Phil, sends me a joke, and I didn't get it. And it says, who's the most important guy at a Mexican wedding? And I said, who? He said, the guy with jumper cables. I said, that makes no sense. <laughs> That's... Well, I don't know. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think. Is that racist or is it? Is it? Uh, is it just a bad joke? It's a bad joke. Oh. I think. He's listening to the show right now, and I wanted to prove to him that this was not funny. Wait a minute. Who is it? Somebody we know. Uh, we'll use his first name, Paul. He's a regular listener. Oh, Paul. Okay. Good friend of Phil's. A good friend of Phil's. Yes. Oh, yeah. Doesn't count then. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> I just You're off you know, the hook. Yeah. Even though you guys don't laugh at some of my jokes, some I mean I don't I don't tell jokes unless I find them funny and not everybody's gonna find them well, funny. Well like I was saying with this the, was uh, just stupid. Steve Kravitz, I hate jokes basically. You know. Uh, because know. they're things that people tell badly. But yeah. you hosted so many comedians over the years. No, but comedians a, don't tell jokes, they do routines. Yeah. You know, uh, the closest we come to a guy doing jokes is uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, who was a bunch of one-liners. But He's good. The, I like. I never knew who he was, but I listened to him. Yeah, but one. but he does routines, and routines are different from jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, I mean, I, you know, one of the things I love, he, he tells the story. He says, he says, I'm having a horrible day. I get pulled over by the highway patrol, and the highway patrolman asked me. Do you know why you were pulled over? And he says, because I'm black. And then there's a, a you know a laughter. And then he waits and he says, damn, those nightsticks hurt. And I mean, I, I found that hilarious. Was that Bubbles? Yeah, Bubbles. Oh. Just in one of uh, his YouTube things. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he yeah. is a very funny guy. But, he you know, it, he he's the closest it comes to telling jokes because he does one-liners. But those are one-liners. Um, mm -hmm. There's a difference between that and a joke. Hey, did you hear the joke about the lady who goes in the bar and you ain't a panty pant? You know, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and then they tell them very badly, just like I did tonight with uh, Kravitz, because I couldn't remember the jokes to save my life. 
because my murder. brain is going, folks. It's turning to mush. Huh? You've got to be doing those kind of jokes several times to, to because the timing is such the issue. Well, the thing Absolutely. is that I had a hard time remembering them because I, they don't stick with me. Jokes don't stick with me, but I do remember the, the dog joke, which I, <clears> I, I really slaughtered the, the second one. But the dog goes over to the other bar, yeah. and and he doesn't come back. And then the guy runs out and in the middle of the street. He sees the dog having sex with another dog, and he says, "Hey, I never saw you do that." And he said, "I never had fifty bucks before." That's the way the punchline's supposed yeah. to go. So yeah. I, I I screwed that one up. But uh, most people, when they have a joke, I got a great joke to tell you, and then their timing is off, and they're they're. They're terrible at telling the joke, and it, it's, you know, horrible. So anybody got a good joke here? No, forget it. I don't want that. I, I'm having a bad day. I went to a bar to have a cocktail, and the bartender says to me, what would you like? And I said, surprise me. He shows me a picture of him and my girlfriend in bed together. Yeah, that yeah, see, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. Well, okay. That's, that's, I, I, that's what I, I try I mean. not to tell jokes on the show. It's a Rodney Day <clears throat> joke I heard the other night. Yeah. Nah, now you're stealing from him. Great. Yeah, that's right. He's dead though. Alex is still alive. Well, there's the old joke about the the guy goes to his doctor, he gets a full checkup, and finally the doctor says, "I got good news. I got bad news." He says, "Well, uh, what, what's the bad news?" He says, uh, well, you've only got six months to live. He says, what's the good news? He says, see my um, uh, nurse? I'm fucking her. <laughs> All right. I'm glad, Jeff, you can explain that one to me later. I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, you got any good jokes? No, I don't. I can't remember them for being. That's me, too. I can't remember jokes. No, no and then I try and bring them back up, and they get destroyed yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you the joke that uh, it's the hardest one for me to tell because it, it demands a certain amount of inflection you'll see what i mean um let me see here uh yeah guy um he, 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 guy has a you know he's a he's a, he's a pharmacist he had runs a drug store and a guy comes in and says um um uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, I can't even remember the joke. Wait a minute. Already lost. Yeah, I've already yeah. lost. Yeah. Uh, no, he, he, oh, he says I, I, uh, I forget it. Oh, I, I know what it, wait a minute, hold on a second. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He comes in and he says, I want uh, five tubes of uh, KY jelly. And he, he, he Guy gives him five jars of KY jelly, and the guy goes leaves and comes back about twenty minutes later. He says, "Can I have another six jars of KY jelly?" The pharmacist goes, "Sure, fine." Here, the guy leaves, comes back about an hour later. He says, "I want to buy twenty jars of KY jelly." The guy says, "What are you doing with this stuff? Eating it?" He says, "No, I'm shoving up, uh, shoving it up my ass." Not you see. I had to get the timing right on that. It's, what are you doing? Are you eating this stuff? And he went, no, I'm shoving it up my ass. See, sarcastically. See, sarcastically. Uh, Bubbles tells another joke, and he says, uh, the doctor says, you know, he says, how's your sex life? And he says, I'm horrible. He says, so I could give you a couple blue pills, and it would really make you think. And he says, well, give the pills to me, damn it. He says, the only problem I have with that is that I'm going to wear my hand out. The way Bubbles tells it, it's Yes, funny. I'm sure. I'm sure. I was raised by Alex Bennett, so I have a very high, you know, mm. I Go think ahead. comedy. I, I, I heard all of the best comics growing up in the 90s, so I. Yeah. It's yeah. very hard to get me to laugh. Yeah. So Kravitz, is he a comic? No. Yes. I, I can't find anything on him on YouTube. Oh, well, it's there. Is it? Okay. How are you spelling it? Uh, the way you got it spelled with a K? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rabbits? You know, he's uh, he's uh, he's there. You know. I'll look harder. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I never heard of Larry Bubbles Brown. I didn't follow you that closely, I guess. But, but um, 
you know, when I watch his stuff, his stuff's funny. He was on Letterman. It was funny as hell. He was on Letterman twice. Well, I, I only saw one on, on, on YouTube yeah. last week. Yeah. But I'm like, wow, this guy's really funny. By the way, I talked to Will Durst yesterday. And... Oh, Will Durst was on uh, one of the shows I listened to this morning. Really? Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. I'll, I'll send you the the date. I mean, he was. Oh, he you mean on very... one of my shows? Yeah, on one of the old shows from 1991 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And this is when you just came back. You went to wherever Houston or floor or Miami, right? And then yeah. you came back live one five. Yeah. This is right when you came back. So you had a lot of smart ass jokes about coming back and stuff. Miami. But Will Durst was on it. He, he was really funny. Oh. You guys were talking to uh, Larry King on the phone, a phone interview. Oh, really? Well, I actually yeah. have a, a, we ran an interview here that was actually videotaped of me doing yeah. Larry King at the Marriott hotel. Yeah, one of the that's all over YouTube. You got a couple comedians with you, and you're standing there putting on at the Marriott. Well, it's Kevin, Larry King was Kevin there. Kevin yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I didn't yes, do yes. the videotape. That belongs to a guy. I'm trying to remember his name now. Who does a lot of videotaping of radio shows over the years? Oh, and, uh, it's one of the first things that pops up on my YouTube when I type your name in. Really? He's it yep, I've seen it several times. You're there talking about a producer that you ran into in the crowd who didn't know who you were, and he had fired you and stuff like that. And is that I mean, the same same one? Yeah. So Alex posted it one time. So yeah. Well, we did. <clears throat> I played it here on the show. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. it's on YouTube. Yeah. You want to get your royalties? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, 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 Jeff. Yeah, Alex. So when you moved to New York, whatever time it was. Did you start go to some of the shows in New York to watch some of the shows there that were comedian? Did I go to well when I first first lived here? Uh, I did, really wasn't doing comedy stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. On the okay. radio, I was basically I was doing music people and uh, political radicals, okay. like Gabby Different Hoffman world. and Jerry Rubin and Dave Dellinger mm -hmm. and people like that. And so that wasn't my shtick. When I went to San Francisco, I picked up on doing comics, and I love comics, and I love comedy. And it, it just, it kind of uh, naturally happened, you know. Um, I had a guy, I had, I think it was, I had, um, I had Bobby, did I have Bobby Slayton on? And he, uh, he, he, I said, gee, this is fun having a comedian on. Do you have any other comedians that'd like to be on? And before I knew it, I was up to my ass in comics. Mm. And it just He's kind funny. of naturally happened. It wasn't, you know, <clears throat> and just like in New York, doing the politics and doing the musicians, when I first started doing musical acts on the radio in New York City, nobody else was doing it. I, I know you find that hard to believe because today mm -hmm. all the time you're hearing, you know, rock people being interviewed. But in those days, nobody wanted to interview any rock musicians. And I did. And I started having one after another. Mm -hmm. And I think the first one I ever had on, if I remember correctly, was Melanie. Remember Melanie? I got a pair yep. of something or another. I don't know. So I got a pair of roller skates. There. Oh, okay. Is. Now I remember. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, before I knew it, I got Elton John coming in when he was nothing, you know, and I had all the Grateful Dead were on. And so I became known as the guy who had musicians on and was the radio radical okay because i had people on like abby hoffman and so forth and um so i didn't uh i really didn't follow comedy that much back then i um i mean i i cared about it but i didn't you know i didn't i didn't go to the clubs or anything like that mm -hmm. you know. uh, plus you know i mean comedy was in a different way back then was like it wasn't like you had these clubs where people went and worked out and so on. They were usually what they were were supper clubs where people had a comedy act come in for a week. You know, and it was somebody not, like not Phil, in L.A. It's somebody like Phyllis Diller. It might be Lenny Bruce or it might be Mort yeah. Saul. But it wasn't like new up and coming young rising comics. You know, you know, in the eighties, a bunch of us would go from work, and take a few days off, and go to Los Angeles, and there was all kinds of stand-up comedy clubs there in Los Angeles. Well, that started to happen 
God, it, it happened later than when I was in New York the first time. Oh. Because okay. you, in L.A. you started having things like, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, Mitzi Shores place. Uh, uh, oh, God. I can't, I can't think of the name of the movie. Comedy Store. Comedy, comedy Store. St comedy Store. Right. Comedy Store. And um, you had the Comedy Store. You had uh, the Improv. The Improv, right. Uh, but mm -hmm. that, was an, that was the Improv West because it started as the Improv in New York. And then Friedman... Um, can I remember Friedman's first name now? Alan? Al no. Friedman um, uh, had, had to give his wife the club when they got divorced. So he moved out to the West Coast and started the improv in, mm -hmm. uh, in LA. I think on Santa Monica Boulevard, mm -hmm. if I'm not so. mistaken. And then uh, he was, the way that he really became well known was the fact that they did a night at the improv. Bud Friedman. They did uh, the night at the improv, and uh, they would have him and a bunch of comics come on, do their acts at the improv. So they got enough of these in the can that finally they were running it five nights a week. Mm -hmm. And then they got so many more in the can, they were running five nights a week, two episodes a night. And that was in the early days of A&E. Uh, and I used to joke that the two most predominant people on A&E were Bud Friedman and Adolf Hitler <laughs> because they ran all these documentaries about Nazis you remember that in those days that's all the two things you would see on there Bud Friedman followed by Adolf Hitler and it was very hard to tell the difference between the two you know so. now I remember going to New York uh, the first times at in the shows, mm -hmm. in the city, in the villages, more yeah. any place, and and there were all these people that were well known on TV, but on these shows, they were the dirtiest, different type of. You're not talking about shows. people like Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, he could have been on that. Sure, I, yeah, but I he's kind of well, a say, if, you, if you want a pure dirty. <clears throat> if you want a pure filthy, there was nothing like going to a Friars Club roast. Mm. Before they put them on TV, when they started putting them on TV, they cleaned them up. Yeah. But boy, before that, I mean, I, I, yeah. many times I would go down with my friend Steve when he was still alive and he belonged to the Friars Club, and we'd go down and d watch something with a bunch of comics doing a tribute to another comic who was there. It wasn't a roast. And they were the filthiest evenings I ever spent in comedy in my life. But I mean, they were funny. They were just funny. So, yeah, that's the way it goes. So anyway, I'm I'm tired once again tonight. I'm uh, trying to I'm trying to stay awake. You know, I, I don't know what it is. But uh, I have this, they say I have this this uh, this positional uh, vertigo. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I'm dizzy all the time. And then they have these exercises mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do to get rid of it. Because what there mm -hmm. is, is you get a little, there's a crystal in your, in your uh, uh, ear canal, okay? Mm -hmm. And the crystal um, shifts and gets in the middle of your, of your root, your ear canal, your root canal, the middle of your ear canal, and you get, you're, you're like this, right? So what you're supposed to do is do these exercises to force the crystal back into the top of your ear canal where it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, it gets I, stuck in the station too, wait, what, I think. what you have to do, what you have to do is you have to lie down and then you have to lean your head back over a, uh, a pillow. And then you have to turn your head one way and then you get really dizzy, okay? And hold it for about 30 seconds, then turn it 45 degrees the other way okay and then uh you uh have to sit up and after a while they say if you do this for like two weeks it'll go away there's another one where you lean over the back of the bed and things like that but you what they're trying to do is you're trying to get these this crystal uh i mean i wish they were valuable and i could just have them removed right or but, you could sit there with your uh, crystal pipe what i don't understand is why they can't remove them or do I need those crystals there? I think I think they're 
I don't know a lot about them, but I think they're an, an abnormal growth that's pretty harmless in most people. And why why go in and do surgery? It's not a growth. It's not. I don't think it's a growth. I think it is an actual oh. part of the ear system. Huh. Okay. But anyway, so I've been trying to get them back, and I don't know if I'm doing the uh, the. Uh, I didn't do the exercises today, but I don't know if I'm doing them right. So I may go to a physical therapist and get them to teach me how to do it. You know. It's interesting. Last night that Phil didn't try and uh, tell you that you're neurologist was wrong when you brought it up last week and that it was horizontal gaze nystagmus which he couldn't even pronounce you know he he didn't bring you brought it up last night but you had the, the, the this thing going on still that it was supposedly when he was when he had me look over here at at you know head straight forward then look over here that my eye quivered you know hmm. and that that well that, 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 that him showed him showed him that I had, uh, uh, you right. know, a positional vertigo. Right. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's also if people get high on drugs. I mean, Phil was partly right, high on drugs or alcohol. If you follow the finger, the reason why the police do it when you come over to the corner here, mm -hmm. your eye bounces a little bit. And it usually you can tell if somebody's under the influence. But how do you know they don't have positional vertigo? I guess you don't. Yeah. But you can usually smell the alcohol beverage on their breath, and it's it's part of a it's part of the field sobriety test. Yeah. Thing. So anyway, so I, I you know that was my whole thing with with uh, thing thing. So. Well, yeah. I th I think that uh, if you were going outside, like you used to go walking and so so forth. I think they they will help you. No, it, 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 I'm I, but it I'm, didn't? Ju I'm just as dizzy as when I go out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And get this started. And now my legs are getting a little weak. Speaking of weak legs, uh, you know, Jack oh, is in the hospital again. Uh, he uh, I, ca I talked to him today. He's in good spirits and so on, but he fell three times within a 24-hour period, and they finally said, "Come to the hospital." They always say come to the hospital. They want to make money off the hospital. Uh, I guess Amy went and saw him today, and she told me that um, they still don't know what's wrong with him, and they want him to transition to being in a wheelchair, <laughs> fighting that, and they're going to send him to a uh, a rehab center. Well, mm -hmm. I, I suggested against that, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because, you know, over the last year and a half or so, I've been talking to Will, in a in the hospital. care facility mm -hmm. is what right. they are right. yep. uh, and um, he doesn't get any better you know there are a few things they have managed to clear up through surgery but he's not getting any better and I just said to him one day I said just say fuck you I'm going home you know I said you're going to do better by being at home and being in familiar surroundings where somehow you have to do some things, you know, that might just improve your situation, but they're not going to get any better with you lying there in this, uh, you know, long-term care facility. It also may give them some motivation being home and, you know, familiar surroundings. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, I mean, you got all these doctors that go, oh, no, they, they told, they told uh, him, they told uh, Jack, oh, no, well, we don't know if we want you to go home because you might fall again. Yeah. Well, so far he hasn't hurt himself, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I told him I told him he should use a wheelchair. If they say use a real wheelchair, use it. But do right. all you can to do some kind of physical therapy. And so far as nursing and so on, you can get a visiting nurse to come in, and it's probably covered by your insurance, you know. And that would help that a great deal. And give him some different uh, yeah. physical therapy yeah but i mean i i felt really bad because uh you know um i, mm -hmm. I like having a show on after mine <laughs> yeah. you know? right. i was going to do something tonight and maybe go over to skype and do uh, do his show after this one but i'm too tired to do it so if anybody wants to host a show after this one i can just turn it on you can come to it and then sit there and talk with people, but I got other crap to do, you know. Uh, so I just tried to figure out a way to, you know, what we're, what we're going to do while he's gone. But I just, you know, I I, I worry about him, and um, it's uh, I think 
you know, he. Let's face it. Where where does he live? What town does he live in? Denton. 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 Denton I think. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of good medical facilities in Denton, Texas. Yes. You know, when you want to take care of a real bad problem, first place I think of heading is Denton, Texas. Yeah, right. That's true. You know, huh? What would you, you say? You. Yeah. It's it's it, best best long-term care facilities in the country. Well, when they yeah. when they when COVID was going nuts with Omicron, they took them to a hospital 50 miles away. That was the closest care center. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if he if he lived here in New York, he he get the best care possible. I mean, you know, I thank God that I got prostate cancer in New York City, sure. because it saved my life. You know, I mean, in, in, do you think that in what, where's this the Yokel Town now he's in? What's it called? It, Is it Denton, De Denton it's, Texas? It's north of uh, De uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, I think. Yeah, Denton, Texas. If I got prostate cancer in Denton, Texas, I don't know if they've got all the radio radioactive machines and the seeds and the, and the uh, you know world class sure. experts. The guy who did the seeds on me is world class. I mean, he. Well, he, I think one of the, yeah. the one of the one of the top uh, uh, prostate cancer uh, facilities. Uh, medical centers it is uh, Sloan Kettering, and I think that's in New York, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. Yep. It's like it's like one of the top in the world, from what I've heard. Well, the guy who did me uh, was the guy who actually did uh, twenty years ago did Rudy Giuliani and put the seeds and in him. He's still alive. He's still alive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, the guy is uh, is world class. I wouldn't have got that doctor even if I was in San Francisco. I might have had somebody who was good. But not that kind of world class, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 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 of course, the funny part about it is, here, here was the thing that always worried me. After it was over with, like I had, he did the radiation on me, and then he put the seeds in me. There were two separate things that he did. Okay, so that now nothing works down there. But it doesn't matter. I'm gonna live. Okay. <laughs> but he uh, he he did all this. And so after it was all over, they said, come on down and, you know, after three months or six months, uh, we want to have a checkup on you to make sure everything was just right, so on, blah, 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 and I do that. <laughs> and then I never hear from them again. So I got a hold of my urologist who sent me to him, and I said, I never hear from these people. In fact, I wrote him a note. I asked him something. I never got a reply. And my doctor said, that's the way it is. These Absolutely guys do what they got to do, and then they don't care about you any longer. They're on to the next problem, yep. okay? He said, look, you need a PSA test. You need somebody to take care of you. He says, I'm your primary urologist. Just come see me and s screw them. They aren't going to do anything to you unless you, they now see money coming down the roads towards them again, you know. So... Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a wake up call for me because I, I never had anything like that where I, I felt, who's going to do the follow up? Well, it must be this guy who put the seeds in. No, the follow up is really done by my urologist, who is, again, in my estimation, a world class urologist mm -hmm. because he's just a really good urologist. He has a way with his finger that nobody else has, you know? It's tender, but at the same time, it. it's erotic. <laughs> what? I said I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had chronic prostatitis most of my life, and so I've had a lot of urologists over the years, and every one of them says, "Oh, let's check your prostate," and I'm like, "God, everybody fucking shoves their whole fist up there." It's oh, it just feels that way. No, I tell you, I tell you, I, I told, I think I, I told this story before on the air, but I had a doctor here in New York years ago, and every time I would go to him, like you know, uh, whatever he was wrong, he positive. said, uh, "Okay, bend over," and then he would stick his finger up my ass, right. and I go, I leave, and then I go back the next time. Now I've got, uh, I don't know, a sore throat or whatever, and I say, <laughs> "I've got a, no. sore, I've got a sore throat," and he say, "Okay, bend over," and he stick his finger up my ass again. Jesus. And every time I would go to him, no matter what it was for, you know, <laughs> I've got a wart. Okay, bend over. And finally, one day I said, yeah, every time I come in here, you stick your finger up my ass. Why is that? He says, you like it, don't you? 
Oh, wow. I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> You what? kept coming back. Yeah, no, well, I mean, he was the only doctor <laughs> I knew. And every time I got, you know, my hypochondriac. So I was always wanting to see a doctor for one thing or another. You know. Yeah, it's part of being Jewish. They had another guy. It was, I remember this. This was really funny. I, my, my, I had a friend, Bruce David, who I used to do Midnight Blue with. And then later on, he was my editor of Hustler Magazine. But back in the day, uh, he was in New York with me. He worked at Screw Magazine. And I, I said, you know, I've got something wrong, blah, 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 blah. And the guy said, have you been to the $5 doctor? I said, the $5 doctor? They said, yeah, no matter what you have, $5, right? I can't believe this. So I go to this, I go, it's, it's right here in town. And I go to the doctor and, the, and there's like 20 people in his waiting room all waiting to see the $5 doctor. And after about 10 minutes, I was the first person in line. <laughs> you know, they were going through so fast, right? And uh, the guy comes in and he, uh, I go in and I said, what's the problem? And I said, okay, I've got this problem. I think I maybe have uh, uh, NSU or something like that, which is a non-specific urethritis. Non -specific urethritis. And he goes, let me take a look. He said, uh, yeah, well, here, take these pills. Five dollars, please. Now, I go home, I take the pills, and it doesn't cure the problem. Of course not. So I went back to him, and he said, oh, didn't solve the problem, huh? Well, here, go home and take uh, take two aspirin every hour, every couple hours. I said, that should take care of it. Five dollars, please. About twenty-five, thirty dollars later, and this is back in the 70s, okay? He still hasn't cured the goddamn thing. And by the way, as I'm walking into his office, there are another 20 people in his waiting room, and the same 20 people that were there when I went the first time. They all got a $5 bill. Yeah, I learned you never go to the $5 doctor. There's there, there's a dim sum place in Vietnam town, downtown San Jose. Yeah. And they have dim sum, and underneath there's this Chinese, there's a door there, and these people, my Vietnamese friends go there. There's a Chinese guy, and my friend will come out, and they'll, you know, a couple of girls, I went, and they have a box of something, some pills, and they take them, and this guy keeps, but but he fixes them. It's wow. funny, I, I, I heard it's today. It's all Chinese, you don't know what it is, yeah. you don't know what's in it or anything, he says take it. I heard today on the news that uh, Joe Biden talked with the premier of China today, and uh, they got into a discussion about Taiwan. And the premier of China, which is Xi, I believe is his name, uh, it, he, um, he said to him something about, uh, don't meddle in things that you shouldn't because it may come back to haunt you. Absolutely. And I went, or, or something to that extent. And I looked at Marjorie and I went, you know, I think he got that out of a Chinese fortune cookie. Xi Jinping, isn't that his name? <laughs> Xi Jinping, yeah, but Xi yeah, is Jinping. his uh, is, is his last name. Right. But yeah. he's the president, not People a People don't realize when Chinese names, uh, it, like it's, it, it's something Wong, the first name is actually the family name, and Wong really? is the first name, or what we would refer uh, to as the first name here. Maybe that's why there's so many Wongs. Yeah. Uh, what's the old line about they're more... Oh, forget it. I can't even remember the joke. I can't remember jokes anymore. Forget it. Uh, it was, uh, <clears throat> what was her name? Oh, man. Hmm? Uh, she said more, uh, I don't, I don't want to say any jokes. Okay, don't say any jokes. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, it's your turn. Tell a joke. No, I'm not a joke teller. No, no. Plus, his timing is shot, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That can't be any worse than mine. Come so, on, Kevin. So, Man, Kevin, how, still... Kevin, how's everything in your neck of the woods? Pretty much the same old, same old. Same old, same old? Yeah. Pretty much. Hmm. Okay, every, we're, everybody. We're trying, to, we're trying to adopt a cat. Why are you adopting a cat? Because the kids, first they wanted a dog, and I said, heck no. <laughs> so... Uh, Adrian keeps saying she wants a puppy real bad, and then we start talking about cats, and I've had a cat before. Cats are a lot easier to take care of, so 
We're trying to adopt this one. Right oh, here. that's adorable. Put yeah, some it, food, it, put some cat food out and it'll adopt you. No, there's a there's another cat that comes around, but this one this one is actually we met it today on a a voice uh, Zoom call. Um, but that, that is it's had like gray eyes. Uh -huh. It's a it's a Siamese and it's a let me see let me see it let me see it again. It no, no, it's it's a blend of Siamese and something, but it it's a it's also a Hemingway paradactyl polydactyl polydactyl yeah what so, the hell does so that mean see the feet they have more paws on them than than oh, the normal the, oh the six paw cats yes yeah 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 and uh so i didn't know anything about well, it not six like, paw but the six i googled everything on there i learned a lot about that type of cat and stuff like that. i used to have a cat before yeah there's a but, good reason uh, to have a cat instead of a dog yes you don't have to walk a cat exactly you know you <laughs> just you fill a box be... with litter and they will go in it eventually you know yeah, well the good thing at your place alex is you could open the window where they're doing the cement replacement thing and the cat will go out and take a dump out there well you see the thing is i don't want to have a, I, I i there are two reasons i don't want a cat okay at this point i love cats but there are two reasons why reason number one is that I don't want a, 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 a cat in this apartment because I would always have to keep the windows shut because anytime they would decide they want to go climb on the windowsill or out on the ledge <laughs> it's a long uh, fall I, I, well, it's a long fall and they probably wouldn't jump but I'm telling you I would be panicking I would just be apoplectic and I can't tell you how apoplectic I would be and so I don't want it for that reason. And the other reason is I don't want an animal who's going to look at me and say, you know, I'm going to be here after you're gone. <laughs> you're right about that because the, the dog, Coco oh, outlived the my mother. Him in? What? Coco and Pebbles outlived my mother. But at least she got to meet them, though. Oh, I mean, it's funny that you said that. I was in bed listening to the doctor story. How many times were you going to that doctor for five bucks? <laughs> <laughs> it's like this guy's got some business. Well, I mean, yeah, I saw how he made his money. Yeah, he never like, cured oh, anybody, so they kept coming back. And not, <laughs> not specific funny. urethritis means wow, they don't good. know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the first time they gave you an antibiotic. The second time they gave, they thought, oh, it might be prostatitis. <laughs> Go take Motrin for a week. You know what I mean? Okay, I'll tell you the best story, though. Guessing game. I'll tell you the best story about being at a doctor, okay? And me wanting to be cheap, okay? So I come down uh, with gonorrhea. Oh, God. Usually you always got gonorrhea on a weekend, you know? <laughs> There's no hospitals open and stuff. Oh. So, uh, but I, it was a Monday. And I decided I really didn't want to pay a doctor, but I would go down to the health department and I would go there and they would look at it and then they would do what they had to do to cure it for me. So I decided to go to the health department down on 9th, uh, 9th Avenue here. And I go in and I sit there. First of all, I sit in the waiting room and uh, they've got pictures of foreign places, all of which you could probably get gonorrhea in, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like Japan and. Korea, excuse me, Korea, uh, you know, uh, and um, I look at the back of the uh, the, the uh, chair. Of, I'm sitting in a seat, and there's a back of the chair, and somebody has written on the chair. I swear to you, Bob was here and will be back. <laughs> <laughs> so now I go in. I go into the uh, to the uh, doctor's office, and the doctor says, "What's the problem?" And I said, "I think I have gonorrhea." And he said, "Okay, let me check you out." And he takes me into the, you know, the examination room. And he says, "Could you do me a favor?" And I said, "What's that?" He said, "Look, we have a few students here, from uh, I think it was you know, wherever, foreign country, Asian." Country. And uh, they're, uh, they're looking at our procedures so that they can learn how to deal with this sort of thing and so on. Do you mind if they come in and watch? I said, sure. He said, okay, send them in. And mm -hmm. in walks 10 people, 10 okay. Asian students. <clears throat> and then the doctor says, student. drop your pants. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and I am sitting there getting examined 
in front of all these other other students. Now, uh, I felt kind of good afterwards because I felt I had done something for medicine. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you it's know, the biggest Imagine part of your money on the floor. <laughs> but having your pants down and having a guy stick a swab up your penis to take a, a take a yeah, take a culture, you're great. huh? You were like, I'm embarrassed. We just one guy. <laughs> you did it for ten people. <laughs> Hey, what can I say? You yeah. know, it, it, you know, if they were all Asians, they probably weren't used to seeing something that big. On you know. After that, I decided I was ready to do live sex shows on Forty Second Street. I mean, if I could go <laughs> that, you know. From the ceiling in the dark. I think part of my part of my uh, part part of my mindset was, yeah. please God, don't let me get an erection. Okay, you know. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. So that was my big day with the with the doctors at. Uh, did you do your medicine, Alex? So I guess did you have gonorrhea or? Oh, several times. Oh, so. Yeah. Alex was here and will be back. <laughs> I like the <laughs> 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 If you had an iPhone back then. No, in those days, I don't know what it was, but there was a period of time in my life where I would get it on a fairly regular basis because I was having sex on a fairly regular basis. But then after a while, I mean, I was still having sex just as much, but I didn't get it anymore. And I hmm. think that there was kind of it was just going around in that period of time. This was like back in the in the in the sixties and seventies, early seventies. Then I think that's where you know. I think it was my, hanging out on Eleventh Avenue. Yeah. yeah, right. So, that's right. This is on Eleventh Avenue. No, I can't. I can't say that after I left New York, I don't think I ever got it. To be honest with really? you, yeah. Even sitting in Bill's <laughs> car. No. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here comes Ray. Is he walking down the street or is he just sitting somewhere and going to say, no, he's sitting somewhere. Hello, oh, Ray. God. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You know. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of peppy tonight, I think. Yeah. I'm not Great. Forget. I don't. It don't sound like I'm forgetting stuff tonight, do I? Nope. Certainly remembering all these wonderful times I had at the uh, health clinic, you know, so that's good. Okay. So, Tony, <laughs> how many times have you had gonorrhea? Uh, none, I could say. <laughs> none. You've got to have sex with another person in order to get it. I think we go in there and says he's back again. I just treated you, Larry. <laughs> he's back. All right, no more. I don't want an audience. The only guy I'm, you know, you get old and. And suddenly you're not going to the urologist as much as you're going to the guy uh, who takes care of your arthritis in your hand and gives you shots of... Uh, you got the uh, shot in the uh, hand, my brother? Cortisone. Cortisone. Yeah. And I need another one soon, you know, so... Uh, those things months. hurt like a mother. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, it's only... <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a short pain, but it's, it's not a, fun. It's a... It's a big gauge needle because cortisone itself is very thick really oh yeah and it's cool. like those old needles that they used when you were a kid you know they pull out like your first strep throat or everything and they jab that sucker in your knee what for oh, strep throat no no okay. like if you get cortisone in your no if you like get cortisone in your knee you know oh marjorie gets it in her knee all the time yeah, that hurts like hell. Yeah, she likes getting her cortisone shots. Uh, listen, I have to admit, it does clear it up for a yep. while, yeah. but just a yeah, while. Yeah, for like two or three months. Yeah, and then it comes back again. Is this yeah. in your, where are you going to get your cortisol? I mean, not where, but what I'm, part I'm going body? to a $5 doctor. <laughs> your wrist? Your wrist again? Huh? Carpal tunnel? Yeah, right here. Right here. He oh, told mine me, lasts for, he, he, hey, told, give me a, he told me this is the most common place that people get arthritis right here yeah the carpal tunnel is right in there the, so okay yeah i think the contra costa tunnel is there too yeah so there you go that's just a joke for you people in the bay area of which is one two three four people here are all from the which bay tunnel? area huh robin williams tunnel no no that is the robin williams tunnel in marin now isn't it yes yeah. yes it's official yeah mm. And they and they named a uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, wings or one of the terminals in San Francisco SFO uh, after Harvey Milk. Well, that's I, right. Yeah, 
Let me see here. What are you looking at? Yeah. Oh, is that, does Robin it say that? Does tunnel. it say it? I, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, not yeah. focusing though. It's not focusing, but it says just went it's, through it Sunday. Time yeah. for a new iPhone. And there it is. There used, to be a, there used to be another name for that tunnel. What was it? I used to call it. I used to know what it was. The Rainbow Tunnel, wasn't no, it? No, it was yeah. called, some people called yeah, the Before tunnel. that, it was... Um, the, uh, you, you know there was another name for it. Cause yeah, I, I forgot. I, I grew up <laughs> calling it I forgot what that. the name of it was. Um, uh, MacArthur is the other one, the General MacArthur. T that's on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the hell was it? No, I can't remember now. I can't believe it. I can't remember that. Yeah, I know. I, I used to go through it all the time, and, and I knew the name of the tunnel. But anyway. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Do you, do you know the... <laughs> the Waldo Tunnel. Will, Waldo That's Tunnel. That's it. Was, the yeah. Waldo Tunnel. The Rainbow Tunnel and Waldo, Waldo yep. Tunnel. Not, now it's Internet just, is so good, isn't it? Now it's just the Robin, <laughs> it's, now it's just the Robin Williams, right? Yes. That's yeah, it. just the Robin Williams. Okay. I, it's great. I love they did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was yeah. Nice. That he was he nice. certainly deserved it. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, uh, let me see here. Oh, here's a good trivia question. Since you guys are in the Bay Area, what bridge has two names, a different name, going in each direction? In the Bay Area? Yep. Let's see. You got the Cartinas Bridge. We got a lot of bridges, by the way, in the Bay Area. You got the Golden Gate, the Bay, we got bridge, the Bay Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, the, the Dumbarton Bay Bridge, Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, San Rafael. San Rafael. Oh, San Rafael. San Mateo. San Rafael and San Rafael Richmond. That's San Rafael Richmond Bridge, yeah. but it has an, two different names in each direction. Right. In, in it's Richmond, called the San Rafael Richmond, Richmond Bridge, but that's not actually the name. They named it after some kind of state senator or something, one direction, and... Maybe it's really? Richmond San Rafael in the other direction. Yeah. I, I, I Leo McCarthy and San Rafael. Both yes, directions. you're right. Leo, Mc, Leo McCarthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I did that a few years ago. I oh, think. That's just going in one direction, though, right? Yeah. Maybe. maybe yeah. Not coming the back the other direction. Probably. What is it? Richmond San Rafael. I think so. Yeah, and where does it so. terminate in Marin? San Quentin. San Quentin. Yeah. Yes, you got uh, it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For Francis Drake Boulevard. Yep. Yeah. And who went to San Francis Drake, Sir Francis Drake High School? Alec. Real famous guy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was there. I was in the gym. I was in the gym when you had your show from there. Oh, I did? Really? I was there. Yeah. That was the show that, that was a show where we were never invited back to my high school again. <laughs> oh, really? Because Monty <laughs> Hoffman did the dirtiest oh. act he could think of doing. They could get away. I, know, I I know you you've mentioned before about Monty Hoffman that you didn't like him and didn't get along or something. Monty but Hoffman. I, was, I really I really liked his humor. It was so funny. His character or his that persona wasn't a was character funny. though. That's the problem. It was so funny. That wasn't a character. He was he was one of the most difficult people I've ever known. Yeah, and he looked. He looked like a what you, a bald sort of old. I don't know what they he like I mean, a mafioso. <laughs> yeah, just it was so funny for for the audience at least. It was. <laughs> what, wait a minute, Brian. You sure you're not confusing the bald with Alex? No, I remember. Oh no. No, he's big. No, he's oh, big. big fat hey, Monty, like there, there's some there's some old comedians that I mean we were talking about jokes and stuff. But for me at a young age and seeing, you know, with Monty Hoffman and Warren Thomas and Tree and all these other comics, I mean, they're all the big <laughs> guys that were there. They're all the big guys that were there, too. But all these other comics, man, to, to, to see those for like 10 years in the 90s, me nonstop. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I listen back to those, Alex, and I'm like, man, so thankful for those times because I start reflecting and back. Some and people, some of them have done, the music. Some of them, the music was good. Some, some of them were just coming up at the time and uh yeah. they some of them become fairly big pat oswalt's done very well and uh, Huge, yeah. um, uh tom kenny yeah oh tom kenny and carlos tom, Alos Rockets yeah, people was saying on the who's one tom tonight. anybody here know who tom kenny is a comedian yeah, yeah. From huh yeah well, he's a comedian from, obviously from san francisco but he is the yeah, voice tom. of Sponge, spongebob spongebob, SpongeBob, SpongeBob. square pants yeah. For the last twenty years or something, think of how much yeah. money he has made. 
and will continue to make it. And will continue to make what's it as long as kids Tom keep Kenny? pulling strings in the side of the toy. Tom Kenny, isn't, isn't he partly uh, responsible for uh, Caddyshack? No, no. That was that was that was uh, that was Kenny. Uh, 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 what's his name? I knew him. You know, I knew all the people over the National Lampoon. Um, uh, oh God, what was his name? First name, last name Kenny. But he he wrote uh, he wrote he was in the National Lampoon's Animal House and wrote wrote it as well. I think he was the writer. Landis? Wasn't Landis in that too? Uh, no, Landis directed it. Directed it. Yeah. He directed it. Um, 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 uh, what was Kenny's first name? Oh God, see my mind. Just, uh, so, as soon as we're off the air, I'll remember. You know, uh, no, Tom Kenny is the voice of Sp SpongeBob SquarePants, and a nicer guy you wouldn't find anywhere. I'm so at happy. At that time, hmm? at, at that time that this one was played, something's going on. When that time was that was being played, uh. uh they had uh, um, you're talking about Kevin Meany's show, and then there are a couple other guys that were just getting sitcoms around that time too. Right. Uh, this is pretty cool to listen to. Back so in Caddyshack, it was Douglas Kenny. Doug Kenny, yeah. I knew there was a Kenny. Yeah, I knew there. Doug. Doug Doug did a, sh a very interesting show with me, which I could talk about someday. But we did a put on. Made people believe that there was a. Uh, wow. He's dead. The he must have. Well, yeah, Caddyshack he, came he out. He fell. He fell into a volcano. Yeah, oh. it says Hawaii. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Some people think he committed suicide, but co-founder of National Lampoon in nineteen seventy. Right. Uh, and wow. uh, it was he and the other guy who was uh, the co-founder was. Uh, oh God, my mind's trash. D don't ask. Don't ask me to think about things I trying to remember because I won't where, remember. Where, huh? Harold Ramis directed it. Ha Harold Ramis directed uh, Caddyshack. No, he did. did he? Yes. Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes. yep. But anyway, you know, uh, those were the good old days in New York. You know, well, one uh, of those channels did a good documentary of. Caddyshack, all the behind the scenes. Yeah, well, there's, there's, a, there's a very oh, yeah, good. It's on YouTube. It's document. like 15 minutes it's long. It's cute. not. No, there's a two hour, uh, uh, a two, two hour, hour documentary really? that's on Hulu. Mm, yeah, uh, and they show they show actually some of the stuff before yeah. the National Lampoon. I knew a lot of those guys. I knew Michael O'Donoghue, and uh, you know, um, I, that I was, was a funny movie. Yeah, but I was very close with them, and uh, we did many a thing together. It was Rodney Dangerfield's first movie. Was it? Yeah. Really? Was yeah, he, was he kept in that? telling that he kept, you know, adding jokes that weren't in there, and everybody is not laughing, and he's complaining to the to Harold Ramis, "I'm not funny, I'm not funny," and he says, "We can't laugh because it's it's being, you know, filmed." Oh. But it, just believe me, everybody's laughing. Okay, well, anyway, hey, there's the theme song. We got mm -hmm. through another one tonight. We'll try and do Sorry, another Tony. one again tonight. No politics. No politics, Tony. Sorry, nothing for you to talk about tonight. Yeah, yeah. No, no law, you, you don't have to talk about the, the guy's going to be indicted very soon. Uh, how are you going to feel when he gets indicted? Happy day. <laughs> Oh boy! Thank you very much, Alan. Appreciate it, and uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for joining us uh, on our program, Brian, mm -hmm. Jeff. Good talking to you, Kevin. Always a pleasure. Just seeing your face there, because it reminds me of Christmas. And uh, of <laughs> course, uh, uh, Tony. Thank you, and Ray. Even though you were a little late tonight, yeah, better late than never. Okay, everybody. Probably, probably from the bunker. Yeah, yeah. We'll give, see you yeah on Jack, give, give a big wave goodbye, and I'm going to play a repeat tonight of Jack's show. Uh, and I will say goodnight to our panel. They're all getting rid of me before I can get rid of them. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for uh, joining us, panel. Uh, there's no Jack Bishop tonight. There is no intersection because he is in the hospital. But hopefully he will get well soon, and all will be... I'm going to sneeze. At the end of the show, I'm thinking of sneezing. Anyway, I'll see you again tomorrow night, uh, same time, same station in life. 
In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.